Cosmic here. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about the seven different Jujutsu Kaisen decks that you can build for Union Arena, as well as have a little updated tier list at the end of this video. So if you're just coming into the game, this is a great time to join because this is one of the best sets in Union Arena, still in the Japan meta. Yes, it does get a lot better with the volume two cards, which we'll mention as we're talking about some of these decks. But otherwise, this is a strong and also just really fun set to get into. So for anyone that new is joining us, I hope you enjoy the game but with that out of the way let's get into it so yes first and foremost we do need to talk about the elephant in the room that you know a lot of people are torn on so we do have a choice restriction from the get-go with the two yuji and the sakuna not being allowed to be played in the same deck this is a pretty nice consistency and power level hit for what is the best deck in the format still uh with blue jjk it is just that strong i want to be very clear if we didn't get this restriction, as someone who followed this deck in the Japan meta for the eight or nine months that it just went completely unchecked and just decimated every single tournament before it got the folder promo, which only made it even better and volume two made it even better. Um, I'm very happy to see this. And now there are other restrictions that they ended up doing. We'll have to wait and see when we're getting volume two and when we need probably more restrictions, if I'm being honest. But for those that are interested in a more neutral you know, balanced format. This is definitely something that's good to see, but ultimately it is still going to be one of the top decks, if not the top deck, because just the consistency level that you still have and how strong Raid Yuji is makes for just a very viable threat that you just have to respect. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it and talk about the first deck that we're going to cover is, yes, the Sukuna deck. So this is a very aggressive aligned strategy with a payoff on the top end where you're discarding the Sukuna's fingers or you can use them for the additional effect to get some type of payoff in either the four Sukuna or if you really want to go up into the more control variant, there's also a six Sukuna that you can play. Uh, that's really crazy if you get off the effect. It just allows you to just reset your entire opponent's turn, uh, but it does cost six energy and two action points so a lot of people didn't go for more of like the controlling style of blue but instead just went for the lord of the ground kind of all in aggressive start so yes we do have the starter deck sakuna so you are going to want to buy two of these starter decks uh for jjk if you want to play this deck again even if you don't want to play blue jjk today i'm still going to very strongly suggest that you buy two of these starter decks before they are impossible to find slash out of print by the time volume two and or the folder promos roll around and this deck gets even better. On top of that, we are getting a North American exclusive starter deck Sakuna, which I can only imagine is going to start off at $150 minimum, again, for how much of a staple that this card is. And yes, you will notice that I only did three of in this list where some of the others that are had the consistency check with it. So with the 2-1 UG went all the way up to four, but I really want to showcase the two different Sukunas in this deck list because I do think the 5-1 Sukuna uh, does need to get a little bit more uh, respect on his name. Now that said, I do want to stress again, all these lists in today's video are more about starting points and more to how do I play the character I care about, again, as more of an onboarding series for people who are new to Union Arena. Once we cover Eggman events or other big tournaments, then we'll have like the full, here's the meta versions of everything that everyone built. But for those that are getting into Union Arena or looking for good places to start, this is definitely going to be the set seven list that I recommend starting with. Also, again, just to wrap up, this is going to be the more aggressive align. But don't forget, you can still use the Yuji as a bounce target as long as you meet the criteria. And sometimes it just is a 3K body that you want to play so you have a raid target. So knowing when to just play something to play it for a raid target versus just being a good 3K attacker is something that you'll have to get a little bit more familiar with in this style of deck. So up next, we have a Nanami deck. Oh, wait, it's actually just UG 2.0. So yes, the other part that we should probably mention in this video is that the raid UG is just insane. There's a reason why it was like 40 or 50 bucks in Japan now, obviously, other than just being later uh, past the set release, but Yuji is just insanely, insanely good. In this format, in this game, having just a 4K balance is effectively the same as removal because every action point that you have access to really matters. And also, if you get to play this for free out of life, it is soul crushing to have your main other threat bounce and then suddenly your opponent is getting a 4k blocker so for that reason yuji is just always going to be the the king of blue that helps the glue to hold it all together uh but there is some really cool anatomy stuff that we still get to do uh but again this is one that i know uh did well in some tournaments again part of this is 
old list that I saved versus looking at the old JP uh, tier list at the time and kind of blending my own thoughts on uh, North American uh, uh, Union Arena meta into them. So that's where we ended up with this list where uh, you still want to be playing the other uh, Nanami that lets you just draw a bunch of cards if you burn seven cards from your sideline. Uh, and also the uh, Raid Nanami himself is just uh, very good. And this is definitely one of the decks that I would put it at a you know tier two setting just again because of how strong and how relevant blue is. Uh, in JJK that this is something that if you are a very big fan of Nanami, don't worry. It does get a pretty significant buff as well as the following decks that we're going to talk about in volume two. So this is definitely one that other than the Yuji's, I'm going to just tell everyone again, playing blue or not, just do yourself a favor. If Yuji gets down to $10, just buy them, just buy them and put them away. Just trust me on that one uh, because you're going to want them for volume two or other people with new players coming in are going to want them for volume two as well. So Nanami, or the UG 2.0 deck itself, is really fun because it's a self-mill strategy that you don't get the additional effects from the cards until you have 15 cards or less in life. So it's a really cool one that allows us to, you know, play more of the Maki, which is just a really great filter card that, while she doesn't have that impressive of stats at only being a 1500 in, in this uh, deck and most of the decks that you play are in anyways, but getting those extra filters can really help us burn down to just 15 cards and then shocker we do have to play Sakuna again because even if you don't hit the uh, extra effects with Sakuna's finger it does have the draw to discard effect built into it which help leads into the 15 cards left in deck that we're trying to go for so in this style of deck overall yes we do have a total of 12 raid targets Yuji just being great for defense Kento just wanting to be the late game or even playing him in the mid game and blocking with him is totally fine as well and then generally by then you're churning enough through, through your deck anyways. If you get down to 15 cards left in your deck, both Sakuna and Nanami are going to be great finishers because you should have your Sakuna fingers in the deck uh, or in, from the deck in your trash by that point. So again, if you're looking for something that is uh, a two different win cons that you can play and kind of build your deck to, uh, checking out the Nanami deck might be a good fit as well. But again, ultimately, both sides of blue are really about one, Yuji holding it all together because he is just an absolute MVP, but then also trying to dig for cards or burn through your deck to find some combination of cards that either burn your deck down to 15 so Nanami comes online or finding the Sakuna fingers, which are then getting discarded to buff up Sakuna himself. So again, huge flavor part for both these that I absolutely love, uh, but Blue JJK again is something that I think a lot of people are going to see just how strong it is as soon as they dive into the game. Up next, we have Mojito, and this is where it starts to get a little bit rough, if I'm being honest. Now, to be fair, this list is only two cards off, uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment, of a list that did win a relatively large size event in early JJK format, um, and then it did go on to do a pretty well in like top eight in a few other places, and largely this is going to be just because of purple just being a good color for the extra filtering that you get, or just the extra value you get out of having cards in your sideline. So what is the Mihito deck? Mihito deck is another uh, surprise, kind of aggressive strategy style of deck that allows you to get in extra attacks if you play the self embodiment of perfection um, as well. So this is one that I've, you know, the card that I have changed overall because it lets you put something act onto your field active um, when Mihito attacks. So this allows you to set up for a board where you might have weaker units overall, everything in the zero to two energy range. But then when Mihito swings, you get to pop your deck on, which is gonna allow you to draw a card, bring back a transfigured person, and then get another attack in. And when they only have four blockers, it should allow you to then get in a chip amount of damage. Now we do have things like Jogo, which is a very strong raid card in this deck that just allows you when combined to shrink something by 1000 and then remove something that is a 3000 BP or less. So right, this is the, the UG light as it were, right? Where you still get the 4K removal. So anytime that a deck gets four extra removal cards, it's automatically going to be kind of a bump up from a lot of other decks in the format. So Jogo and having extra value for Jogo being a cursed spirit and other ways that depending on which version of this purple deck you want to play you have other ways to either search 
search for it uh, or get extra value or again just play even jogo's uh burn spell when you have things like transfigured person to lower something by 1000 bp uh, is quite strong so yes this is definitely more of a very aggressive style of deck that has some really fun bp manipulation things that you can do and set up for some honestly pretty pretty strong and pretty scary turns with getting in the extra attacks now the thing that i do have to kind of mention here is that for those that are maybe more experienced and have been playing Union Rift for a while now and kind of know other decks in the format, unfortunately, this does just feel like a worse blue Hunter Hunter hybrid a lot of times with even less consistency, right? Because when you get Brisky Dice going, when you get Goring you going, you're able to filter through your deck a lot quicker, where this Mojito deck really has to draw a perfect opener it feels like a lot of the times to get the you know the more insane starts now again there are some starts where you're just going to be able to grind down your opponent's value where you have jogo getting you extra removal getting in chip damage maybe you raid the big mojito and you get to burn a 2500 that they were trying to play or again 3500 because you probably burned off a uh, zero transfigured person to make it a 3500 which then mojito's 2500 removal can hit it things of that nature right uh but ultimately you'll also notice that we do have some of the other cards here from the other archetypes in purple making an appearance because there just isn't quite enough yet to really round out this style of deck uh, but it again does get some pretty nice buffs in volume two so if you want something that is more aggressive leaning while having these big brain combo plays that you can pull off while also getting a couple extra attacks with the uh, stage that you want to be playing uh, which again is kind of a hit or miss. It's something I don't personally recommend playing, but it's a really cool flavor thing to pull off a couple of times. Uh, this is definitely a deck to look forward to. And again, purple in general, just being a color that we know is going to continually get nice buffs uh, in Union Arena. So whenever volume three comes out, which I'm sure we're going to get in the next year, uh, this is probably still a deck that's going to get even more pieces and just overall get a nice little power bump. So overall, very solid deck. Again, in the early JJK format in Japan, it still did well. It had a number of top eights. The blue decks did way better and just crushed top eights. Uh, but the Mojito deck did still put up some pretty reasonable results that I feel pretty good of saying like, hey, if you want to try something new and take this to your locals, uh, absolutely you can. Now going into the, from there, this is where things start to get a bit rough. So we have the Toto deck and these next three lists that we're going to talk about, and I, I want to try to say this up front before anyone gets the tier list, or maybe you jump to the tier list and it doesn't matter because you already saw it, but um, these next couple decks are just absolutely terrible, unfortunately, in Volume 1. However, however, the glow-up that they get in Volume 2 is, mwah, it is insane. These go from, I feel confident like not even recommending people to play these decks in their current state to it is now suddenly a t high tier two competitor right like it is a massive jump that they have so please take that with a grain of salt in terms of these lists overall and the uh tier list that you're going to see here at the end uh because it is a bit rough for what we have and again even toto gets paired with a completely different engine to be fair in volume two so getting into it toto we have the uh, Kyoto Jutsu High deck, which is really just a deck that cares about how many of those affinity that you have on the board itself. Like, Toto is cool. It does the boogie woogie effect. It has damage too. It's going to be a, a very real threat that your opponent has to block turn after turn. Uh, but the really cool and something that I really wish wasn't a 2k normally because it just gets bounced to hell and back unfortunately uh, with either color triggers or when we get red, it's also going to get hit by red color triggers. Like, it feels really bad, but Kasumi is a really, really awesome card. It has double attack. It has a way to block effectively, but it just gets hit by everything under the sun uh, when it comes to removal or various effects that your opponent might be playing, right? Like, even Mahito just raided by himself removes this card, but... With the double attack, again, it is something that you just want to line up five attacks where possible. Um, and then there are other ways to either buff it up. You know, we are playing the zero drop May that has the ability to give it plus 1,000 power. So, um, you know, there are going to be some situations where you're able to play this to your back line on the next turn, promote it, and then do like double my or a my into a bounce to say, okay, now it's a 4K double attacker plus the other attackers that I already have on the board. Um, and again, it is a very respectable blocker in this deck as well. Again, unfortunately, it costs two action points. It does get just hit by every removal under the sun possibly. Uh, so it does feel a little bit worse to play in that regard. 
that said there is still some other cool stuff that you can do in this deck by just rushing down your opponent with uh, momo and two energy kasumi so it does still lend itself quite well to a more aggressive start while then having toto at the top end threatening that two damage which will clearly chip away at their board over time uh but this deck does also then kind of suffer the same uh fate as the green bleach deck where because we care about so many of these infinity type of cards for the kasumi payoff if we are going against a deck that has more removal, it is very difficult to set this up and making sure that we have a full front line to really get the most value out of Kasumi. So again, this is one of those cards that it's so, so strong when it just gets to land on board and go unchecked, but it can be very difficult to get there. So definitely keep that in mind. So unfortunately, Toto himself not really lending it well to what the rest of the deck wants to be doing other than just literally having this little tag that matters for uh, Kasumi. But uh, this is, again, one that gets a lot better in future sets. Moving on from there, Megumi. And this is another one that just absolutely breaks my heart because it is uh, very rough to build this in Volume 1. And full disclaimer, this is something that I looked at for Volume 2 because this is not a deck that I followed um, in Set 1 JJK. And you'll see why at the end. Uh, but it is uh, a completely different deck in Volume 2 as well, just from like a consistency standpoint, and does jump up quite a bit. So Megumi is all about the Shikigami that he can uh, bring to the field and pumping them up with various effects, and then getting to do something with the Chimera Shadow Garden, which allows you to get the extra attacks in. And there's also other ways to buff them or play them out or cheat them out, what have you. But it really is about just filling up your board, getting the attack in with uh, Megumi, and then getting the stage effect or sight effect that gives you the extra attack which uh, again is going to be really strong for just being able to get in the extra chip points of damage again jjk seem to be more of a multi-attack set uh, we do see this in like sword art online as well uh, but the thing that you'll kind of immediately notice is that when we look at the power thresholds for uh, a lot of them you know we have the divine dog totality that we are really going to rely on and serpent well neither of them is getting to 4k uh, and yes, sometimes just getting in that fifth attack will be what you need to close the game. But you really want to try to bump these up, you know, plus a thousand on each one of these so that they take something out with them. And that's where obviously the Shadow Garden really comes into play to give them that extra 1000 uh, bonus here. But it does feel a little bit bad that uh, unless you get that stage and if you get a little bit of a slower start, you will be walled out by your opponent. Now, we are also playing the Nobara raid here just to help lock something down and kind of clear the way for these multi-attacks um, because, unfortunately, Nobara just doesn't have a lot of good stuff uh, by herself. It's a deck that wants to be more of a controlling piece. Uh, it follows the same principle of Yellow Bleach, but just really doesn't have enough tools to make it its own thing. So that's where we do see some of the other parts kind of coming into play here. Um, and then admittedly, I ran the Panda as well for the active trigger, and it's also a step. So it allows you to get an early 3k blocker if you really need it, or you just want to be aggressive with it, uh, and then can pop to the back line. There's also a case where you can do the uh, Raid Panda as well instead of Nobara, but then your zeros are kind of, uh, you know, you need to find something else to replace it with. Um, so keep in mind, there are some changes that you can make to this deck overall, uh, but ultimately I would not change out any of the Megumis or the Shikigami, because that's, again, what you're trying to build towards. And then with Chimera Shadow Garden, again, it's nice that it has the get trigger. You probably only need three because it feels really bad whenever you see a second one. You already have it kind of um, in play. But this is going to be an action point heavy style of deck for that regard because this always takes a action point to play it. So small disclaimer, I really wish that they would have removed the AP cost just to make this a little bit more of a streamlined experience. Again, it does get buffed in the next uh, set. But unfortunately, because you are so heavily reliant on a lot of characters that just don't have any effects or lower BPs, this deck can struggle a little bit for that reason. And again, also just really having to get the sight uh, or you don't get to do the big combo finishes. And then you're just relying on the couple of 4Ks that you have to deal some chip damage, which is pretty rough to get there, uh, admittedly, a lot of times. And then the last main deck that we're going to talk about, and here's where I put the Panda in because, uh, again, it does have stuff in its raid form as well. And we have a giant six cost Gojo that we are trying to play. So this is definitely more the late game control style of yellow deck where the Megumi is all about being very aggressive, getting in multiple attacks and, you know, punishing our opponent for having these slower decks. And Gojo, you know, it can be great. 
It's a six cost, two action point. It does draw a card, which is insanely, insanely valuable in yellow because they just do not have a lot of draw or filtering. Uh, you get to reduce an action point by one. So in, in spirit, he is a six one because you get to draw and play something else uh, for free, or at least a re reduction of one action point as long as it's not another Gojo. Uh, and then he has impact. So it's a great finisher. It's a 5K body. What more could we ask for, you might say? We could ask for a complete and consistent deck is what we could ask for because unfortunately uh, you'll notice is that this doesn't really have anything else to it. You know, we have some other double energy providers. We're playing the three double energy Gojo just because it's a 3K and double energy because again, we're trying to go up to six. Um, but outside of that, for things that want to go into kind of the Gojo style of play, uh, there's not a lot. Like we have the double block, which is a 3,500, which is nice. It's the color trigger we want to be playing anyways it's harder to remove. So it's like, cool. The the six energy Gojo and the four energy Gojo are really cool. Again, this one you just drop off once you get to volume two, unfortunately, or the folder promo. Um, but from there, there's not really else a lot to talk about, right? The whole cool thing about Gojo is that you're supposed to use uh, his technique, uh, hollow purple or red for various effects, right? You draw them, you reduce the cost by one, what have you. Cool, very flavorful. You get to use his effect, uh, but you kind of need to play Union Arena beyond that, right? So uh, you'll notice again, we don't have any type of like the draw one, discard one in yellow uh, combo that everyone else seems to have. Again, would really love to see yellow get more of a draw uh, engine behind it. That would really make this a little bit easier to play. Uh, again, we do have the uh, a couple draw triggers in here. I just tried to find another zero that would let us draw something, right? If we get out of life. And then Toge is here just because it buys us a little bit of time. It's not a great answer, obviously, but we are playing a, a much slower deck than probably what we would like to be playing. And we need to assemble all these uh, Gojos, which again, because it's not a raid, it is something that you're going to play to the front line because a 5k blocker is still a 5k blocker, but you have to wait a whole turn to get the impact across, right? So it's something that you can't even... Uh, get good tempo with it, yes it does allow you again to draw the card which you get need so so badly but having this have a raid body would have been so much nicer just to immediately get the effect and crack a point of damage but again at least it's a 5k bp making it a little bit stronger so this one again if you're trying to build more of a late game yellow style deck that you really want to have gojo be the top end finisher then yes this is probably something that you want to lean into and start building um and again panda having a uh, 4k double block can also be really nice so we actually have two double blocks one does require rate i probably should highlight that point again so against a lot of the more super low to the ground aggressive strategies like we've seen out of the uh green uh, Toshiro rush deck that won Eggman's event, you know, having access to eight double block can be really, really strong if people are leaning more in that direction. However, again, we are still kind of a little bit limited by the fact that Gojo is a six energy, which does feel very rough to play uh, a lot of times. And now just get this out of the way because nobody likes talking about these decks and nobody wants to be that person, right? To showcase it is, yeah, Blue Rush is playable this format. We have Toto, which allows us to get in extra swings. We have the Yuji that we can just still play for its raid as removal when we really want to. Uh, so yes, it is just 4K the bodies, put them on board. And you know, you get to live the dream and have the full board. Toto also allows you to just get in an additional attack at 4K. So yes, I just had to throw it out there. A lot of reasons why this just doesn't get played uh, in Japan admittedly. And yes, it has popped up in Japan previously is that it just it's not fun to talk about and it's obviously not in spirit of uh what union arena aims to be anyway so yes this will probably still be a valid deck same thing with like yellow rush and purple rush and what have you uh but maybe that is a good segue into the last part which is the updated tier list for jjk and uh there's a lot to talk about here both in current format and then also in ways that i might want to uh change this going forward is that you'll notice we have, uh, again, huge shout out to Yuji, which is really kind of the glue holding everything together. Uh, but yes, pretty much blue, JJK, Sukuna, uh, Karapika, and pretty much every purple bleach deck that you can build, right? I would rank all of these as kind of our new tier one going forward. And as I was putting this together, the other thing I thought about is I should probably just start looping all of the... Uh, similar uh, colors from a, a title into a single item here because uh, if we look at things like uh, green bleach it does get a little bit more uh, awkward to kind of combine these right where yellow bleach 
if you combine them, you have a tier, you know, 1.5 silo deck and like a tier three deck. So where do you put that? So some of these are meant to be a, a combination of all the possible decks from that color in one title. And kind of where does that sit in the tier list? Where other of these are kind of where do they sit by themselves, right? So I'm going to go through these kind of individually. But some of the thing about how I might change this in the future is where that lines up just in terms of you know, is it better to just showcase the newest decks and where they fall in the tier list and then kind of the aggregate of the other? Or do people just want to see, you know, 60 different decks, you know, on these tier lists, which if you look at Tory cards, uh, this is really rough to digest and look at, you know, time after time. So I'm trying to give a better way to do this going forward. But um, again, that is just a very quick high level uh, disclaimer. So that is going to be our new tier one going forward. Uh, the thing I will note here about the the new two drop that we got uh is just insane with emperor's time and getting the early removal i mean it definitely bumped up uh Kropika from a you know 1.5 to high tier two deck to feeling very comfortable just saying it is a tier one deck now obviously there are still some comparisons you might want to say against like the green gone list which i think definitely needs to be experimented on a bit more uh but this is another one where it's kind of hard to put green hunter hunter in the same category because i do think there is enough of a notable difference here uh, to put Gone in its own separate category, but because of that new two drop we got, uh, it is still rated very, very high. Uh, and then also you'll notice here is that these little stars mean that it gets buffed even more in volume two. So definitely look forward to those uh, decks. Uh, Nanami, as I mentioned, there's a couple different variations that you can do with this here, uh, but because it does have the consistency that blue offers just overall for JJK, as well as having one of the best raid cards in the entire game, you have to put this at high tier two, if not tier one, just because it's another blue JJK deck. Uh, Illumi here, I really meant to be more purple hybrid versus if you're playing a purple pure deck uh, from the Hunter Hunter series, I do think it is a whole tier lower. So something else to kind of note here is as we kind of evolve the North American meta and how more people get in the reps, what have you. I think in general, hybrid decks are just going to be the best version in general. So that's kind of its own disclaimer going forward. But again, another point where I want to show that if you build a hybrid deck, I do think it is going to be an entire tier higher than just the pure versions. Uh, Green Bleach, this is meant to be just be more of the Toshiro and then whatever of these other two, you know, top ends you want to uh, lean into. Pretty much all versions of these, I would uh, I feel very confident calling a tier two list. Obviously, it's very weak to disruption or the rush variant is just very auto weak to double blocker uh so that is a consideration in terms of which version you want to run but overall very solid deck gone in friends as i just mentioned high tier two with the uh new two drop that we got and then mojito this is one that again i gotta put i don't personally love this deck because i just view it as a worse blue bomber deck uh but it is something that you know put up good numbers in japan so if it holds on to relatively speaking the same uh, volume of wins that it had over there in terms of what people are playing and, and how they're being able to find success with it uh, definitely belongs up here. And then the other one that I didn't mention, because again, I was trying to put this as the two pure variants of them, uh, but blue hybrid for Hunter Hunter is also a very solid tier two list, uh, in my opinion. Now getting into the uh, a couple of the more uh, pure versions here, specified slot obviously just continues to be uh, a bit of a consistency issue and while it can grind down your opponents if they start to stumble a bit uh having only the four raid bodies feels pretty rough uh, all things considered same thing with genthru with having the bomber deck it's really nice the consistency factor that you do get for this one comparatively is really nice uh, again compared to specified slot but the fact that you have to rely on genthru to kind of clear the way and that Anything higher than 4K is going to be very rough for you to deal with. And especially when we're probably going to be getting more 5K bodies in the format with, you know, people just playing Gojo. I'm sure people will, right? It makes the Blue Bomber a bit worse here. Uh, Yellow Bleach, the raid variants. Look, this hasn't had great success all of this format. I know that it was up there for like a tier two. I'm dropping it a tier here. Obviously, the Rush variant should go in either tier two or tier one. But the traditional raid one that we've seen unfortunately does fall off a little bit and then the uh phantom troop pure again probably tier three uh just getting uh in the b category tier three b whatever uh lower end just it doesn't have the right tools unless you build as like a purely purely aggressive build and then like uvogin can be kind of nice but even then like if you're trying to build that style of more purple aggro you still want to go hybrid because you want to have four uvogin and four of the alumi giving you eight double damage 
uh, which is really rough, or damage two, I should say, right? Uh, and then the last category is, yes, old man, nobody really likes this deck. Unfortunately, just massive consistency issues and having a 5k body is not enough. And then the three decks that I mentioned is that these completely change with uh, volume two or the folder promos. So all three of these go up to high tier two, or I should say like mere, mid tier two, probably depending on when we get them. Uh, but right now they do just feel very, they feel incomplete. If I'm just being perfectly honest, like, yes, you could build a hybrid version of these two, but in volume two, both of these become very different decks. So it's, it's in this weird spot where, yes, a hybrid version might be what people gravitate to overall, but for where they are right now, it just feels like something is missing, which we do eventually get uh, in volume two. And then, of course, the last part here is this, the Novara, because I'm sure there's some people who are like, well, I really want to play this style of deck. She has the damage, too, when she's not rated. Unfortunately, there's just not enough good stuff in yellow JJK in Volume 1. It does feel pretty, uh, pretty bad to play, unfortunately. So that is our deck breakdown for JJK, talking about every deck, as well as our updated tier list here at the end. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, which is your favorite JJK deck, or are you like me and just really waiting for Volume 2 at this point so we can see some of these other decks kind of take the spotlight in? Again, there's some other really fun decks that we can play. They just need the kind of other half of their deck, uh, as it were. So again, definitely let me know your thoughts below. But uh, until then, you know, look forward to release event this weekend we're going to be getting our case uh hopefully a little bit early and have a box unboxing video and show all our case hits and all that good stuff here hopefully pretty soon uh but again i'm just really excited to you know open up the next one build some new decks see some new cards finally uh because we've been playing a lot of union arena for the bleach and hunter hunter and then of course i will be doing another style of this video for code Gias in just three weeks at the, at the t after this video goes live. So three weeks from now, we'll be doing the same thing again with Code Geass. So please make sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all Union Arena things. But until then, my friends, stay safe, stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.